Well, good morning. Happy Tuesday. Happy as always, garbage day. It's great to be with you on this devotion, and I wanted to share with you, uh, I was looking, I guess uh, the theme of repentance comes up a lot during the season of Lent. Uh, the call to repentance. We've been hearing for the last number of weeks in uh, Mark chapter 1, Jesus' first sermon, where he comes and says, the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. And that call to repentance isn't just to call to those really wicked, evil people, the bad people. It's call to all of us. And many times people uh, will heed the the, uh, the call to repent, or at least they'll consider in their lives where they're wanting to repent or willing to repent, and maybe unwilling other places. But the call is to repent of our whole lives, to turn ourselves around, to stop going the ways of our sinful flesh, the ways of the world, the ways of the devil, and evil and temptation around us, but to instead follow after the way of our Lord, Savior, Jesus. Follow after the way of his cross. And that was our theme, and that's been our theme for our midweek services. So today I have a devotion. Uh, it comes out of my uh, For All the Saints uh, prayer book. It's actually a kind of funny devotion, which I kind of want to share when I read this. But before I do that, I want to share with you from uh, Peter's epistle, from 2 Peter chapter 3. I'm going to share with you basically almost the entire chapter of chapter 3 from 2 Peter. He begins by saying, This is now the second letter that I'm writing to you, beloved. In both of them, I'm stirring up your sincere mind by way of reminder that you should remember the predictions of the holy prophets and the commandment of the Lord and Savior through your apostles, knowing that first of all, that scoffers will come in the last days with scoffing, following their own sinful desires. They will say, where is the promise of his coming? For ever since the fathers fell asleep, all things are continuing as they were from the beginning of creation. For they deliberately overlooked this fact, that the heavens existed long ago and the earth was formed out of water and through water by the word of God, and that by means of these, the world that then existed was deluged with water and perished. But by the same word, the heavens and the earth that now exist are stored up for fire, being kept until the day of judgment and destruction of ungodly. But do not overlook, overlook this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are as one day. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a roar, and the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved, and the earth and the works that are done on it will be exposed. Now, since all these things are thus to be dissolved, what sort of people ought you to be? in lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for the hastening and coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set on fire and dissolved, and the heavenly bodies will melt as they burn. But according to his promise, we are waiting for the new heavens and the new earth in which righteousness dwells. Now, here ends the word of the Lord. Now, this passage here brings up a few things, of conversations I had with individuals in the last few days. Uh, one of them was about the afterlife about eternity, what we'll be doing, and having some unsettledness that they were struggling with. So I was spending some time counseling and encouraging them, reminding them what promises we have through Jesus, and that there our future is not just in heaven, but it's a new heaven, new earth that has been promised to be made for us by God after this one has been destroyed. And knowing this one's going to be destroyed, as Peter writes here, we should live lives of godliness and holiness uh, in seeking to live as God's children today, looking forward to that day that approaches. And to be living that way, we need to live lives of continual repentance, recognizing that our flesh, the world, uh, the devil is always seeking to lead us in a way away from God. Well, I'm going to share with you devotion today. It comes from Harry Muhlenberg, who, was a pa who lived in 1711 to 1787, so a couple hundred years ago. I, he was a pastor, and he writes this letter. He says, When I preached my first sermon in the country, upon my arrival in Pennsylvania, an aged man came up to me and said with amazed wonder on his face, Dear Pastor, I felt just as though I was listening to the dear God of heaven himself. Now, in the meantime, I turned a little more, I learned a little more about this life, and where after the second service, he again declared to me, to my face, that it had been like hearing the angel from heaven. Well, I took him aside and urgently besought him to leave off this sinful, disorderly life and surrender with his whole heart to the Lord Jesus, the true friend of repentant sinners, and thus find peace for his soul. 
Now, I had hardly given him this advice when he burst out. Who was this devil's priest to give me advice? This is a free country. I laugh because this man who had heard Muhlenberg's sermon responded by saying, wow, I feel like I heard the voice of God. I feel like I heard an angel. Wow, I think this is what God's saying to me. And the pastor took that opportunity to say, okay, then repent. He's like, how dare you tell me what to do? It's a free country. I should be able to do what I want to do. Well, that's how many people look at repentance today. They repent of the things they feel like they want to repent of. And the things they're not really wanting to, they'll take very self-justified actions and feel like they are confident they are in the right. You see, we need to realize, especially in season of Lent, temptation and sin abound all about us. That the ways of the world, the ways of sinful man, of our own flesh, leads us astray again and again and again and again. And so therefore we need to be praying to the Lord continually to give us vision, focus, to see things the way that he desires us to see them, to hear his word, to heed his call, to repent and believe in the gospel. And so that would be my urgent devotion for you today, is to heed God's word each time we gather together, whether it's on Wednesdays, whether it's on weekends. We have services, let me see, three services tomorrow on Wednesday. We have a noon at 2.30 and a seven o'clock to 2.30 is over at Glen Square. We have services on Saturday at 4.30, Sunday at 8 and 10.45. We have lots of Bible studies. And in all these ways, the Lord speaks to us, calling us to repent. Consider in your life today where you need to repent, where you're hearing God speak to it. So maybe the places that feel kind of sensitive, that you're like, I really don't want to stop talking about this one. I don't, I don't want to give up this. No, you must be talking about somebody else. And that's precisely what the Lord's calling you, calling you to recognize in your life that the things that are away from him, not ways that lead to holiness and godliness, but rather ways that cling to the things of this world. Not looking forward to the new heavens and new earth to come, but rather wanting to hold on to whatever we have here, thinking that this is all there is. Now this will all, as Peter reminds us, will all be destroyed by fire, as it was before destroyed by water. So don't hang on to the things of this life of this world, but rather see how God has made you promises. Made you promise of forgiveness, of salvation, of life, and of eternity with him in the new heaven and new earth. Well, know that today. Be certain that God has promised you all these things when he placed his name upon you in baptism. And since then, he calls you to live lives of holiness and godliness, just as Peter does. So we do that by repenting daily, by listening to our Lord, and by following our Savior. Let's close with a prayer. And the prayer I want to use is actually a prayer for my same devotion. Uh, these are devotions for today. This one was done by Howard Thurman, who lived in the 1900s. So let's bow our heads in prayer as we conclude. Give me the listening ear. I seek this day the ear that will not shrink from the word that corrects and admonishes, the word that holds us up before me, the image of myself that causes me to pause and reconsider. The word that challenges me to deeper concentration and higher resolve. The word that lays bare needs that may that make my own days uneasy and seizes upon every good, decent impulse of my nature, channeling it into the paths of healing and the lives of others. Give me the listening ear I seek this day, the disciplined mind, the disciplined heart, the disciplined life, that makes my ear the focus of attention through which I may become mindful of the expressions of life foreign to my own. I seek the stimulation that lifts me out of the old ruts and established habits, which keep me conscious of myself, my needs, and my personal interests. Give me this day the eye that is willing to see the mean of the ordinary, the familiar, the commonplace, the eye that is willing to see my own faults for what they are, the eye that is willing to see the likable thought was correct, the strength to see that thou hast not left thyself without a witness in every living thing, thus to walk with reverence and sensitiveness through all the days of my life. 
Give me the listening ear, the eye that is willing to see. Amen. I thought those words really echoed Peter's words to us. Since then, all these things are thus to be dissolved. What sort of people ought you to be in lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God? So consider how you might be living today, those lives of holiness and godliness, looking forward to what God has given to you in Jesus Christ. Well, have a wonderful day in the Lord. Know that I love you. Have a blessed uh, Lenten season and uh, follow my pattern and uh, seek to repent each day. Listen to the Lord's word. Give eyes to see yourself for who he says you really are. And then seek to follow his path. Loving others as you have been loved. Forgiving others as you have been forgiven. Repenting, not living like the ways of the world, but living the way of Christ. Have a great day. Know that I love you and aloha.